Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out the uh, Eosheen EV900 goggles. And these are a new kind of box style goggles from Eosheen with a bunch of new features. Some of them good, some of them not so good. And I'll kind of go over some of the important ones here. This is a, I believe, a prototype or a beta version. And I'm thinking that they're taking feedback from the reviewers on uh, making improvements before they come out with a production version. So I'm not exactly sure when this will be coming out. Um, it's not even available on Banggood's website yet. I believe Eosheen does have a listing for the product on their website with the current specs. And I'll just go over some of the really important ones here. It's a dual diversity system, so you got two receivers inside, receiver A, receiver B. The screen inside here is horizontal. It's on right underneath this panel here. And there's a mirror that's at 45 degrees that projects the image into a set of lenses. They're not, it's not a Fresnel lens here, but you can see here there's two curved lenses here, almost like glasses. Then that's what you're going to actually see through the goggles. This actually magnifies the image and makes the image really large. I, I believe they say it's an 80 degree field of view. And I'll get into that here in a second. It's, it's great, but also kind of problematic at the same time. Now the screen is different from their older generation uh, EV800Ds. That had a 5 inch uh, 800 by 480 screen. Uh, this one here has a 5 inch 1080p screen. And what they're doing is they're taking the analog signal that comes in from the receivers and then they're using some sort of uh, uh, digital signal processing or some sort of DSC, DSP chip that's on, on board here that is converting that to an HD signal that uh, the screen actually shows you. And so once it does all that processing, the actual image that shows up here in through the lenses here is actually quite good. It's um, detailed and it seems like it's a very high resolution. Um, however, there's because of the, the, the signal processing that's occurring from going converting it from analog to digital, it adds a little bit of latency. And it's, they're saying on the website, it's about 30 to 50 milliseconds of latency. However, when I flew with this, it really felt like uh, maybe at least 50, perhaps as much as 100. I really couldn't measure it because of the way the goggles are. I'm sure someone will come away with measuring that latency, but because the latency was fairly noticeable, I mean, you gotta account for the latency that occurs in the processing in the goggles on top of the latency that occurs from inside the FPV camera. So if you add that all together, depending on how much latency is coming from your FPV camera, it can be quite a bit, and I thought it was somewhat difficult to fly in fast situations, like where I'm going through like a lot of close areas like trees and stuff. I was kind of afraid that I was going to be hitting stuff, so I had to kind of fly a lot more carefully in more open areas. It's still flyable, but the latency is noticeable, although I'm pretty sure that if through practice and stuff, you could probably get used to that amount of latency. However, when you're used to flying other goggles that don't have that latency, uh, it is distracting when you first try and use that. Now, in terms of the uh, features of the goggle here itself, uh, obviously the two receivers, you have a, um, I think it's a mini HDMI in here, so you can take a, like a video projector or a video signal from your laptop and project it into the screen here and watch it on the screen. It's, it's a perfect uh, a 1920 by 1080 screen, it's very nice. And then you have also a v analog video in here on the side, uh, and you know, a headphone jack as well if you want to connect up a pair, a pair of earphones. You can hear the audio coming from your craft. You do have a uh, charging jack here in, on this side. Uh, they provide a uh, two charging uh, cables. One, uh, it's a JST plug, so you can plug in like a, a LiPo. I think it's two to four S LiPo. And the other one is a USB, so it can charge off five volts. The battery that's inside here is a 1S 2400 milliamp hour battery. They claim up to two hours of operation. I was getting more like an hour, 15 minutes of operation of on time. Um, your bands and channel, obviously, is uh, how you change your bands and channels. Pretty straightforward. And then this button over here is for modes uh, or your source and also the menu. So if you get into the menu, you can obviously change things like your brightness and contrast and stuff like that. The search button does auto search, tries to scan the band and find your channel. However, this didn't work for me for some reason. Every time I tried to find my uh, broadcasting or transmitting channel, it was not able to find that. So I had to go and do go the manual route to uh, find my channel that I was uh, broadcasting on. And to try power it on, you'd have to hold, press and hold the power button for three seconds. And then a fan will come on. 
if you don't hold the button down for three seconds, it'll turn right back off again. And then here's what the screen looks like. Obviously we're having static because I'm not transmitting anything, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in something right now. And go ahead and I'll find my channel that I'm on. Here we go. And it's kind of hard to see. You kind of see that there's a little distortion here in the middle. It's because there's actually two lenses. So I'll try and focus on one side of this thing. So over here on the upper left, there's, it says that you're on diversity mode and it shows you your band channel and also the frequency. And then over on this side is the voltage of the battery inside, but you can't really see that too well. Let me move this around. And you can see it's currently at 3.8 volts. As you can see, I'm, I'm uh, projecting an image from a Runcam Micro uh, Swift, and it's, uh, it's very sharp, very clear. And I'll go ahead and show you a little bit of footage I recorded on my phone. Uh, it's obviously recording the screen here, so it's not going to be that clear, but I'll, maybe I'll give you an idea of what that what the image actually looks like. Okay, we'll go ahead and turn it off. So basically you just press and hold again, and then it'll turn off. The fan does come on all the time, and it seems like it's a, you know, a single speed doesn't go faster or slower, but it is on all the time. It's probably there to cool down the signal processing chip because it's probably uh, using quite a bit of power to process the analog and converting it to a digital signal. Okay, so then, the last issue that I'm going to talk about here is the fit, fitment issue, and this is a, actually going to be a big problem for a lot of people. Uh, for me, it was okay. I, um, you basically have to press this all the way close to your eyes, with this, this, uh, these lenses here, because uh, the way the field of view works, and it's so wide, if your eyes are further away from the lenses, then the edges of the image that are being transmitted gets cut off. So, for example, if you have like... Uh, things like OSD elements on the bottom of the screen, for example, then you won't be able to see those. You'll be able to see the center of the screen very fine. And it's such a huge field of view that if your eyes are right up against these lenses, then the edges get totally cut off. And that's a, that's a problem. Now, you know, it, because of this, the way that it works and you have to get your face all the way up against the lenses here, you know, I had to basically tighten up these straps to the point where my face was pressing this foam all the way down, and then my nose was touching this corner here. It wasn't to the point where it was uncomfortable or hurting, but I could feel that it was it was touching here. And I would say I have an average size to medium sized nose, not too huge, but my, the bridge of my nose is a little bit lower than probably more, most people. So I, I think for me it was okay, but I think for other people with larger noses or where the bridge of their nose is sticking out further or further up, they're gonna have issues with this hitting their nose. And then, obviously, without the, without being able to get their eyes close to the lenses here, they're not going to be able to get the full screen in their field of view. And so that's, this is a, a pretty big design problem. And if you look at the way the EV-800s worked, it's had a much larger opening for the nose right here. And then, so if you've ever used the EV-800Ds, um, this should be give you an indication of how much room you've had here in this particular case and how much that has been reduced on the 900s. So uh, if uh, you if you're watching this video, you should definitely take note of this and fix this and, uh, and produce a design change here where this actually gives you more space for your nose, both at the top and the bottom here. So this, this whole opening here needs to increase in size. And if you look at the, this is the um, faceplate for the uh, EV 011s. Also, this one is much bigger than what is on the EV900s. Also, the last thing I want to uh, touch on is the weight. I thought it was totally fine. Uh, with the antennas, it was 380 grams. Uh, the, just for reference, the EV800Ds with the same antennas was 440 grams. So, weight wasn't a problem um, getting this, you know, as long as you have the strap all the way on and uh, uh, with a good tight fit. Uh, it, the weight is not an issue. It's just that if you if your nose is hitting this, then you're not going to be able to use this in terms of flying. But other than that, I thought the weight was fine. Now, overall, I think that I like the ideas that they've done here. 
I definitely like the 1080 screen. It's really sharp and bright. Um, I don't like the latency, however, so they need to improve that. If they could somehow uh, still have the same quality of image, in the high resolution, high definition image, but reduce the latency down to something a little bit more reasonable, you know, less under 50 milliseconds, I think that that would, uh, be, that would go a long way to making this a usable goggle. And of course, you know, just changing the shape of this um, this box here with the lenses and everything and re redesigning this so that more noses can fit, so this can fit more faces, I think that shouldn't be too hard to do. Um, if they could change that and also adjust, uh, you know, reduce the latency, I think this would be a really nice pair of goggles for someone who wants to use box style goggles and get a really sharp HD image uh, on something like this. So I think that a couple of the changes like this, I think it could go a long way to make this a viable product, but in its current form, I would say I would have to pass on this if I were if I were to spend money on this myself, because I just can't fly with this with the latency that's producing. Anyway, it's gonna do it for this video. Um, if I happen to get a newer version of this, of course, I'll bring it to the channel and I'll show you what changes they've made. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, and I'll be sure to pass them on to you, Shane and let them know that uh, if there's a lot of interest in this product and the kind of changes that you guys would like to see in this product, I'll be sure to pass those on to them. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.